Welcome in for another episode of Ball Club Confidential. I'm your host, Austin Price. Tennessee playing at Missouri coming up on Saturday. That will be a big one for the Vols, 7-2, and two, as they travel for their final road game of the regular season before coming home to play Georgia and Vanderbilt to close out the season. Let's bring in Volunteer Club's James Clawson. James, we've got Coach Eckler on the show tonight. He's a ball of energy, so I expect you to bring the energy. All right, I'll do my best. As we talk about uh, another successful weekend last weekend, Vol Club tailgate this yeah. weekend, portion of the Vol Club members will be a part of a uh, tailgate uh, at Missouri. Yeah, Orange and Tennessee and members, uh, information should be going out in their in, in email. So, um, But we'll, yeah, we'll be in Columbia. Look forward to a big game for the Vols. You come home, you have two big tailgates the, the following week. You'll have that Georgia game. It's a 3.30 game, so you kind of you know have enough time to tailgate uh, on the front end um, and, and should have a, a lot of you know potential uh, – celebrities at that type of tailgate because you have former players coming in for a big game against Georgia who will likely be ranked number one. Yeah, this is going to be a great day. We will get started early, probably like similar like we did against Texas A&M. We have some live music that day, and we'll wait. Um, we'll tease that a little bit longer. Uh, but oh. we're going to have some – so it should be it should be a fun a fun day leading up to that game. David Trent coming to town for that? I don't know. Not David. but Am yeah. I singing Volunteerville? Somebody. Got the signing day celebration coming up in December. Um, we'll get full details about that coming out uh, in, in, as we go along through the season. But another chance for Vol fans to hear from Coach Heupel about uh, this year's recruiting class and then potentially meet a lot of the newcomers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a great event last year. We got so much great feedback from last year's event. It was one of the – I think a lot of people would say it's one of the best events we've we've done so far, having that whole that whole freshman class there under the same roof and, and giving fans their first access to those guys was, was pretty cool. So hopefully we can replicate that almost in the exact same way. He is James Clawson. We'll see you next week. And uh, as we get ready for the Georgia game, now let's bring on Coach Mike Eckler. What's up, Austin? What's up, man? How we doing, man? Good. How are you doing? Great to see you. I knew you were going to bring the energy. Shoot, you kidding me? Ready to roll. Coach Eckler, you're a Midwest guy, man. Nebraska – cornfields and all that that entails you played you know you're getting your, your college ball at kansas state what drew you to knoxville though hey, you know just josh heupel i've known hype started off in coaching as you said i played at kansas state and then was in private business and got into coaching at oklahoma in, in 2003 and i was the defensive ga hype was the offensive ga and so we were, the coaches were on floor three, Hype and I were on floor two. So we, we basically were office mates for a, for a year there and get, really got to know him, got to um, really appreciate him as a person and obviously a great coach. And, and we kept in touch all these years. So um, anyway, it, it, it didn't work out at a previous stop. Um, just the timing wasn't quite right. And so when he made the call and, and um, offered me a position here at Knoxville, uh, you know, it was too good to be true. I know that Tennessee's a place you've always kind of admired from afar. And then, you know, so, to, you know, I remember talking to you the night that you were, you know, that you're, you're coming this way. And I mean, you were, you were stoked, you know, just to, 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 to be a part of the place. What have you found since you've been here? I'd coached here a, a few times before a couple of previous stops in the SEC. Sure. And each time that I came in here, I thought, number one, what an amazing setting. And, you know, it just, well, I'll backtrack a little bit. When I was coaching at LSU, we pulled in here and it was mid October. And I, don't, I can't even remember exactly where we stayed, but I went out for a run. It was uh, 11 o'clock at night and I had one of those little GPS run trackers on. Yeah. Me, and I just kept running and just kept running. And it was two o'clock in the morning when I get back and I'd gone 18 miles. And so I felt like I, you know, pretty much ran all around Knoxville, got a pretty good feel for the area, which I enjoyed a lot of the hills and everything. But anyway, going to the stadium and, and the crowd and the atmosphere in Neyland Stadium, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful settings in college football, in football period. And I always, I always told myself one day, I'm a, in my career here, and I'm going to ski into work and drive my boat into work. And I haven't quite done that yet, but that's on the bucket list. You, you do have the boat. You, you got that you know, after about a year when you first got here. Um, 
and then of course you had, you get injured and you almost had to miss the whole yeah. whole ski season there. How hard was that? Yeah, it is what it is. You know, I mean, I'm, I was just glad, very thankful to get that injury taken care sure. of. Sure. I mean, I'd had, you know, for those that don't know, I got a lot in common with Peyton Manning. Had the same neck surgery he had, and so what was what was cool about that is I, I got operated on at three o'clock in the afternoon. Drove myself home that night and um, was at work and on the practice field running drills at 7 a.m. So it kept me down, it really, for about seven hours, which was a little bit, you know, a little bit discouraging, but yeah. I'm out there. Hey, I'm out there, and I am I got a dog on. They, like, they <laughs> like glue you, right, yeah. where they slit your throat. And I'm out there blowing a whistle and, and yelling and hollering and, and um, the players were like, man, Eck, you're nuts, man. I go, shoot, you tell me you got a little nick, you got a ding. I mean, come on, man. I just had neck surgery. I'm out here. So I, I did it kind of to prove a point. You have so much energy, and, and, and you just kind of have that zest for life. When you get in a quiet room and it's just you, what are you like? Is this like, are you, are you catatonic at that point? Like, what, what are you like when you're just all alone, the lights are out? And it's just you, like late at night. Like, or do you go to sleep easy, or do you kind of sit there and think about things? No, I, I don't sleep a lot, to be honest. And I, I get some thoughts in my mind, and a lot of times it's it's football related. And I'll just I'll, I'll come up with some good ideas at night, and I'll get up and I'll write them down, and and um, you know I'll, I'll get a few solid hours probably each night. But you know, shoot, I got, I got plenty of time to sleep when when it's all over with. Coaching special teams. What's your favorite part of special teams? Is I'll, it is it kick return? Is it punt return? Is it oh the favorite the favorite um, yeah yeah unit yeah I mean as far as like yeah. you know it's definitely it's definitely kickoff cover kickoff cover yeah I mean it is that right there that is a gams game that's a grown ass man's game I mean you got to go down and and you get to teach the guys every aspect of football I mean because think about this all right in football it's pretty simple. 99% of the time, you're either defeating a block and making a play, right, on tackling sure. somebody, or you're blocking somebody. You know, the only the only other option is you have the ball in your hand. So you're either – you what you get to do in special teams in general is you get to teach fundamentals and techniques of how to set up blocks and defeat blocks, so you block destruction, and you, um, you, get, to, you get to teach them how to block people. So you get to teach. All we talk about is transferable skills and how it transfers over to being a defensive player, or being an offensive player. And so when you talk about like kickoff, it's so cool because it's football is all about relationships. It's all about time and space, ball me man, and where the ball is. So you get to teach guys. Okay, there's a the ball, right? I'm in my running my flying forty simple concept somebody's got their eyes on you somebody is over there targeting you to block you yeah well you might like to put your eyes on them right so we talk about you know, like if you come to our special teams meetings it's like a cult i mean i'll say one <laughs> word and a hundred guys will chant out the, they'll finish the sentence in unison i mean it's just how it's how we've trained them so you know i'll say like we'll make a full and they'll say ass speed decision and, you know, I mean, let's say, you know, some of these buzzwords I probably can't say on air, but, um, you know, but like anyway, but it's all about concepts, right? Sure. You know, talk about physical and they'll say physical ass leverage, you know, I mean, like, you know, pads under pads, right? Yeah. And alignment leverage and, you know, call side and ball side leverage. I mean, just teaching them all these different terms and, and techniques. But at the end of the day, it's not rocket science. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're not out, out there, you know, um, curing cancer or anything. I mean, we're out there defeating blocks and, and we're blocking people. So there's base fundamentals and techniques that you've got to understand. And back to, back to kickoff, you know, when, when you really think about it, like when you're covering a kickoff, right, you know where the ball is. You know, we call it, we're kicking it left, deep left, right, yep. deep right, whatever. You, and right off the foot, you see where the ball is. So that's. Or with Turboville, just yeah, to the back of the yeah, end zone. Yeah, no joke. It might be in the third row. <laughs> but so you know where the ball is, right? So as you're sprinting down, running your flying 40, we time them by the, when they hit the 35 to the 25, it's 40 yards. Sure. And so we got guys sprinting down, that's free money. 
you're making your money in that zone. And we got guys running four flats, four ones. I mean, like flying. And within that flying 40, you got one job to do. Identify who's targeting you. And obviously they've got a good idea through, you know, practice and what we've, what we've shown them. But the fact of the matter is they can run anything. It shouldn't matter. If somebody's got their eyes on you, it's your job to decipher who's targeting you. Now it's time and space. It's balmy man relationship. And it's about taking 100% of your attention to that block, using one of your tools and defeating that block and going to making the play. So that's why I, I love that aspect of it because it's speed, it's collision, it's pulling the pin, it's all those different things that, you know, that making making those full ass speed decisions that that turn you into a really good football player. When he said gam, I, I, only thing I could think of was like, like you know, that's what you might call your grandmother, like gam gam. Ah, <laughs> and then <yeah. laughs> it's fantastic. More difficult. For you, as an as an old special teams guy, busting up a wedge, or walking your three daughters down the aisle. Jeez, I don't know about that one. Now uh, I'm gonna be a wreck when that happens. So I'll tell you what. I mean, you know, uh, three little girls. It's my my littlest, our our youngest, 16th today. And I'm telling you, it's it's amazing. You know, it, it, being a being a, a girl dad. I mean, shoot, that's. That's hard work now. It is. I've got two myself. That's you know, and the, 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 they always say mama's boy and daddy's girl. And oh. buddy, that's you know, that is so so true. Oh my gosh, I I could say one wrong word, and not even have any idea what I was saying when they were little, and and tears would be flying. And uh, so I, I there, that's gonna be hard on me. That's gonna be hard. But you know, they're unbelievable young ladies, and couldn't be more proud of them. So, but. As far as a wedge goes, I mean, that, that part was fun. I didn't go through them. I just jumped over them. <laughs> so, like, you're so high energy. You're so personable. Like, does do the girls, and you're, I don't want to leave out the sun, too, but do they ever go, Dad? Like, you know, like when you're out in public, I'm sure people come up to you, right? I mean, that you're, you're that one of those guys, and you're, you're, you're so personable and, and infectious. Like, are they ever like, Dad, can, seriously, can you turn it off for five seconds? You know, they – their their personalities are very similar so they're like you yeah i mean they're like they're extremely loquacious and they they can go into a room and they can you know we've we've lived in 11 different houses we've lived from coast to coast yeah i mean i've been uh, i've broke a lot of huddles over the years and what's really cool about that is i'll never forget when i was coaching at southern cal lane got fired on the tarmac i was part of that staff and i came home and I said, all right, kiddos, family meeting. And Abby, the one who plays volleyball yeah. right now, she looks at me, and she was in, I think she was in second grade at the time. She goes, ah, oh, Dad, we're moving again. And <laughs> Didn't even know, and, just went know, there. Yeah, I said, after I said family meeting, and I said, yeah, I said, you know what? I didn't want you guys to see it on TV, but Coach Kiffin got fired. And um, we'll have to see how the end of the season goes, but chances are we probably will be. And she goes, you know what, Dad? That's all right. I've got friends here, but not great friends. He said, all that matters is we're together as a family. And I, to this day, she claims she didn't say it, but she said it. Because <laughs> I, I, I will never let her forget that. It, it's pretty special. What's your favorite part of coaching? Like, is, uh, is truly, it practice? Is it games? What is it? I, I love... Meeting time? I love going in every day, and you're chasing greatness. Every single day, it's it's about gaining gaining a little a little knowledge, perfecting a technique. I'll give you an example. Today we go out there and we do a brand new drill in special teams on kickoff cover that no one's ever done. I mean, we we sat there and discussed it, you know, and and roll it out there and. It's it's all, and then you you do something new like that, right? And you you don't know exactly how it's going to play out, and you have to tinker with it a little bit and stuff. And then there's so many unintended consequences that you know that come come about in good and bad ways. Sure. And so we're watching this drill after you know after practice this morning, and I'm going, holy cow, man! I didn't really see you know that how this 
how they would react in this way. And wow, it really teaches this or really teaches that. And if we tweak the alignment here and do this, so it's, it's about um, coming up with different things, thinking outside the box. Like we do some things punt return wise. And again, I say they've never been done, but I mean, I, I guarantee they haven't. That just different ways that um, you, you think about things and different ways to teach guys and put them in situations and maybe take as much of the running off of them, but put them in, we call them like finisher drills, you know, at the point of attack. And, but teaching them, and so they fully understand the techniques and how to apply them. And again, I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but that's what that's what really really lights my fire, is just is just finding a better. All we are is teachers, and just finding a better way to teach it. We've had so much change in college football, of course, NIL, one time transfer. But the one thing that I, I wish they could go put the toothpaste back in the tube on is all the conference realignment. I mean, you're an old Big Twelve guy. I mean, I I like that Colorado's going back to the Big Twelve, right? I don't like this little Oregon, UCLA going to the Big Ten. I'm not even, I mean, like, Texas, Oklahoma's fine coming to the SEC, but I mean, like, I still wish that they were part of the Big 12, right? I mean, like, I'm more of a traditionalist on those type of things. Is that kind of how you feel on those things? I really do. I, I, I couldn't agree more with you. But, you know, the landscape of college football has just changed so much in <laughs> the has. last few years. And, but, you know, and people get caught up in all the changes, the transfer portal, the NIL, and this and that. And, and the way I look at it as a coach, you know, I, I can't, I can't waste time thinking about all those things because I have zero influence or effect on those. Yeah. All I can do is control what I can control. And the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, you can have all the bells and whistles and do this and that, but a true football player, they they want discipline. They want to be coached. They 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 want to be developed because you can sound you know be a used car salesman and tell, hey you know come to Tennessee and this and that and he can't develop you. You're worthless, man. You're worthless to him. And the day I got here, I stood in front of those guys and and I said, hey, I got three things for you. Number one, it's my job to earn your respect. If I can't make you the best football player you can be, then I'm worthless to you. You don't need a 90-year-old buddy. You need a <laughs> sure. coach. You need a mentor, right? And it's my job to earn your trust. And that doesn't happen overnight. That happens when you're at Alabama and, you know, something bad happens. Am I going to point a finger? Am I going to point a thumb? Are we in it together? Are we really in this thing together? So it takes time, right? And then the third thing, once you got those two things, and once you figure out that I actually care about you, I love you, now we got something. And that's kind of, you know, that's, that's really not to speak for hype, but that's how he is. I mean, he's just a genuine, like, RLD, man, real live dude. And those kids, you, you can't fake it. Because yeah, I know tons of people out there that in, in those positions – that hey they're front runners when things are going great oh hey great job you know <laughs> yeah. and then the minute something happens it's like i told you and they, you know I'm like come on man i mean it, you're either coaching it or allowing it to happen and so to me when when those guys do something that that you know that's wrong or they do something and, and a bad play it's on me man i'll take it i want it and when they do something great that's on them but, you know, we're obviously going to coach it and say, hey, look, now, understand this. And I've told guys a million times, in, like in teams meetings and stuff, I said, look, that's on my tab. But now I want everybody in here in this room. You lock in now, and we all learn from this. Because the next one, that ain't on my tab. All right? So, you know, so, I mean, I sure. think those guys, they respect that. And they know that, you know, I'm going to stand up there and, and I'll take the bullet. You know, and, and but at the end of the day, you know, again, it's, that's my job. All right, we got RLDs, we got GAMs. What's your favorite acronym? Shoot, I, I got too many of them. I've hashtag a lot of stuff, man. The Dizzle, I like the Dizzle now. RLD is a real life dude, yeah. right? And a, a Dizzle, that's a step above a dude. Dizzle, when you go to Dairy Queen, you're a little yeah. kiddo, man, you get the ice cream cone with the sprinkles on top of it. That's Shizay's Dizzle. Shizay <laughs> is French for you know what? 
<laughs> I knew this was going to be a blast. Yeah. Greatest impact on you from a coaching standpoint was who? Wow. There, there are a lot of them, man. Um, Bill Snyder, Hall of Fame head coach, uh, absolutely had such an incredible impact on me. I mean, that man, um, he's amazing. And I'll never forget, probably one of the spe most special moments of my career as, as a player. He called me in before my senior year, and he said, you know, Michael, he goes, never done this, but um, I'm going to name you team captain for what you've done for this place. And so that was like my – that was my one, probably my biggest shining moment that, I mean, like, I was not a great player. I wasn't. But I'll tell you what, I set an NC2A record. Nobody ever played this game had more fun. And nobody, period. I mean, there is, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll, I'll go to war with anybody who tells me they had more fun than I did playing this game. And I just enjoyed the process and en enjoyed everything about it. You occasionally see that player that comes back for a game or a practice or whatever. They look like they still got a player or two left in them. You still got one. You still got one special teams left play left in you. No, I got it. I probably got a good game in me. Got a good game in you. Yeah, yeah not one play, man. I'm not a one and done. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about putting the pads on during practice to demonstrate? Oh, I've done it. Oh, you have. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big cleat. You're, you're not a cleat guy in practice, though, are you? No, I mean I have before, but no. I'll tell you one funny story. A few years back. One of our guys in spring ball, he picked one off in yeah. the end zone. And I was running with him stride for stride. And he was going to run it back 100 yards, made it to the 50, and stride for stride with him. And he looks over at me, and I looked over at him. He hit another gear. I hit another gear. Made it to the 20. My quad exploded. I had no idea what happened. I, th I was like a sniper hit me. And I went down literally on my face. And I got up, and I was like, I just still didn't know. It felt like there was a watermelon in my quad and it yeah. like exploded, right? So I get up and practice is still going on, you know, down, we're in red zone. And I'm like, son of a gun, man. So I just kind of jogged down. My quad was blown up and, and finished practice. <laughs> this guy, what, uh, what's your goal long-term? Like, you know, what, what, what do you want to accomplish? Well, I want to, um, join the um, senior professional water skiing tour. Is there such a thing? Yeah. How old do you have to be to do that, though? Like, what's the senior? Well, I think you have to what's be. The age? I think you have to be over fifty. And okay, you know, and I'm still. I, that's why I, I like staying in shape, man. I like staying. And shape. how old are you like right now? Ready. I just turned. I mean, I'm, I'm fifty, there, man. Yeah, I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to turn that sucker on. Yeah, but you, you don't act 50, you know, nor look it for that matter. Well, my, my Whereas, girls, like, I think Jerry Mack looks like he's 60 and, he, oh, and he's like 40. On. I tell him that all the time. Like, nah. We, you know, you know what's really crazy? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this just because I'm passionate about it. But uh, a lot of people don't know this, but back in um, 2017, um, my wife got diagnosed with breast cancer. And the short version of it is, she did it um, holistically, and she um, went out and got three degrees in nutrition. And where I'm kind of going with this is, since then, we've, as a family, we've eaten clean. And I'm telling you what, man, there's some great books out there like Food Lies and things like that, and I'm just passionate about it. I, I truly believe, like, if people really understood what they're eating and all the crap that's in it, that and if they ate clean, I'm telling you, it you have more energy. You don't eat as much, and you know, it, you know. I've heard the saying that you can eat your food as medicine, or later on you can eat your medicine as food. That's real. That's RLS, real life shizay. <laughs> so, when when you go out to eat, what like what like. There are places that you just don't go eat, or like, kind of take me through what you know what that's like when you go out with your wife for a, a dinner date. I mean, is that? Or we'll go. We'll go places where they've got organic food, and, and um, you know that's really what I eat. Like today, I mean, I ate sushi from Whole Foods. That's what I had for lunch, and 
you know i mean that's it's kind of what i do man how important is she to the mike eckler experience barbie yeah oh geez i mean she's unreal i mean when i met her the moment i met her i i, I came up with this theory it's called the no butt theory and i tell our players i tell everybody I said you marry the first person without a butt and when I met her, it was like every other girl I'd ever dated it was like, well, I like her butt this and butt that, all these butts. And Barbie had no butt. So, yeah, she's unreal. She is like, she's probably the most kind-hearted person I've ever, met, I've ever met. I mean, she is just, she's amazing. What do you like and admire most about her? Just her pure heart. And she just loves people, and she could care less about material things. I mean, it's just all about, it's all about, you know, just experiences. I mean, she can quote every line in the Bible. I mean, she's she's deep water. Speaking of experiences, what when Mike Eckler's got a brief moment in time to go do something with the family, what do you guys like to do? I like to drop the hammer, man. Get outside and and go. I like to go boating. You know, get out in the water. That's probably my favorite thing to do. We'll it, to mostly lakes and rivers, or do you like to go to, out to deep sea? No, the lakes, just lakes and rivers. Gotcha. Yeah, we like to ski and wakeboard and, you know, surf, all those things. One fear in life you have is what? Claustrophobic. Yeah, and that happened when I got an MRI right when I was done playing. And I was actually sick at the time, and you have to stay in that machine and it's like being in a coffin yep. and you hear all the dinging. And then, you know, I had a bunch of congestion. It was running down my throat and I, and I was like, my gosh, I felt like I was in a coffin. And so at that moment, I'd never been claustrophobic before. And now like in an airplane, if I've got, a, if there's three seats, I can't sit by the window. If I can't, if there's two seats, I'm good. Three seats, nah. I'm out deuces. You know, my dad was like that. Like he, you know, he had a, um, he had a little bit of a heart deal. Had to have a stent put in. And after that, he got claustrophobic. I mean, like you put him in like, I mean, like we can be at, you know, having dinner at Chili's and if we're in a booth, he's not sitting on the inside. Now, granted, I mean, he could literally stand up in the booth and, you know, crawl out, but he, he, he does not go for that. Like it's, that's a, he, he, he doesn't like elevators. I mean, like it's a, it's a thing he's never flown, you know, when you say go to Chili's, I think of Talladega Nights, you know, going to kick. That's go Applebee's. Get, oh, that's right. Okay, Applebee's. Yeah, let's <laughs> go get kicked out of an Applebee's. <laughs> Reese Bobby. <laughs> what a guy. Now he's on NCIS. <laughs> what, uh, what's something that most people don't know about you? Man, probably a lot. <laughs> um, I like to read. Yeah, I like to read books and like to, um, you know, biographies and and um, so that, that's probably that's probably something that a lot of people don't realize. Fiction, nonfiction? No, just just biographies. So you like real life stuff? Yeah, yeah, I like the like uh, history guy. Yeah, I, I enjoy history, but you, I, I like I like a lot of sports books. To be honest, sure, I mean, I'm I'm not that deep. If you could have dinner. With three people, dead and alive, dead or alive, who would it be? Wow, that is that's really hard. Um, probably, it'd probably be four. Okay, probably be both sets of grandparents. I miss them, man. Dude, listen. To quote Step Brothers, another. Will Ferrell movie. Do we just become best friends? Grandparents are the best, and people yeah. hear me talk about this all the time. Big O's, you know, got not only his grandmother, but he's got a great grandma that's still alive. And and I, grandmas are the by far the best. My grandmas, grandpas. My grandfather was a barber. My other grandfather was a uh, he he was a restaurant owner. And uh, you know, I miss the the fried chicken. I miss the pork chops, the homemade French fries, all the different stuff that you know the the, the pound cakes. Oh yeah. I miss like my grandma Eckler. I could do no wrong. I mean, I I I could have. I mean, no wrong in her eyes. And I mean, they're just you know they're just special. I mean, they just I, I love. I miss them. How long did you have them? Um, up until shoot, my my grandma Martin passed um, uh, two years ago. Wow. Yeah. 
Well, I lost my last one. Um, it'll be three in February. Three in, actually, three in March. Sorry, early March. All my grandparents died in February. So the running joke with my grandmother, she was the last one. I'm like, every year, I'm like, well, well you just got to make it through the month of February. Yeah. <laughs> and she did. And literally, like six days later, I think it was March 6th, um, she passed away. So, yeah, grandparents, grandparents are the best. If you could go back and tell 15 year old Mike Eckler how this whole journey was going to happen, what do you think you'd say? Where do I sign up? I mean, literally, Hype and I joke about that a lot. We'll sit around and we're like, man, can you believe we're coaching at Tennessee? I mean, we, we always, we're always like, man, if you would have told me this when I was a little kid, I would have been, come on, man. This is too good to be true. I mean, this, think about it. I mean, we're, we're living a dream, literally. I mean, yeah, is it hard work? Yeah, do we get home at 3.30 in the morning from Kentucky and back at work at 9 a.m.? Yeah. And work till 9 p.m. Yeah, well, that's kind of what you sign up for. I mean, it is a meat grinder this time of year, and you just you put your head down and you go. And really, what's what drives you as a coach is a fear of being unprepared. And so you just you don't even think about it. You just put your head down and you go. And but to, you know, back on that deal, that I've had some amazing experiences in my life. I, had, I grew born and raised, as you mentioned, in Nebraska. Had an opportunity to go back there and coach there. It was my first full-time job back at the University of Nebraska. Roll in there, and I'll never forget it. Roll in and walk in the stadium. It's midnight, and I'm sitting there. And my grandma and Grandpa Eckler used to sit in the first row every game, never missed a game. And I used to you know, go to every game when I was a kid. And I'm sitting in there looking down where they used to sit. And they were had since they had passed before, and I mean I was just sitting there crying my eyes out, you know, to have an opportunity to go back there, experience that, and you know Tom Osborne was the, was the athletic director, you know, and, and all the other journey places I've been, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, have some of them been jacked up, heck yeah, you know. I mean, if I worked with some people that, you know. Maybe I didn't really enjoy at times, yeah. But I learned so much along the way. And again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. I mean, uh, so many different characters. I mean, Ed Orgeron. I mean, working with O <laughs> and understanding him, you know, and, and just a different guy, right? Sure. And understanding that a lot of people, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, but like that guy's wired different. If you're not the best at what you do, he's gonna try you. And he's gonna freaking chew you up and spit you out. And, and you're gonna be done. But once you earn his respect, and he feels like, and he knows you're the best at what you do, you're good. But it takes time, right? Sure, 100%. And, you know, it takes time to understand him too. <laughs> hey, yeah. How about you already been in 15 schools, boy? Here's the rolling ball of butcher knives. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> That's my O for you. <laughs> when he was coming to Tennessee, and next time we talked to Hubs, you go, Hubs, when Hubs did the interview about him coming, he literally was at dinner with his wife, and he wrote it down on a napkin. Like, he wrote down all the quotes on a napkin and then went and, you know, typed it up. Yeah. You know, many, many moons ago when, when Ed was coming <clears throat> here with Lane for that 2009 season. Fantastic. Last question, we'll go out the door. And I ask it every every show. I didn't ask it last week to Cooper Mays, but he had been on with and with, with Darnell last year as a tandem, and he gave his answer then. <clears throat> Jordan or LeBron? Oh, Jordan. Hands down. Ask your kids that. They all say LeBron. No. A few of them say Kobe. G said. Who do you think G said? Jordan. Dr. J. Really? A little Julius, huh? <laughs> I, I of course, you know. That. Of course, you know G's cousin is Charles Barkley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he oh, loves yeah. to he loves to talk about Barkley. I need to get Barkley up here to talk to the team. No, uh, MJ. I you know I coached at North Carolina. Yeah. MJ was around a little bit, and it was pretty cool. I was at the Carolina Duke game, and he comes out there, and he's actually talking. Um, our head football coach was out there with him at halftime at, at midcourt, and he's talking about how, um, you know, this 
he, he, he quoted, he's talking about Carolina football. He said, you yeah. know, the ceiling is a roof. Think about that. Chew on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And so the next day, there's T-shirts all over. The ceiling is the a roof. roof for Carolina football. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. why, that's why he is the GOAT. Yeah, that's right. He is Mike Eckler, Coach. We appreciate you coming out and uh, kind of peeling back the layers and letting us get to know you a little bit. And uh, we'll see you over in Missouri on uh, Saturday. Hey, sounds awesome. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. Appreciate you.